Hey guys, welcome back to Fished It Up. Today I want to talk about surf fishing. The last couple times that I've visited Panama City Beach, I have surf fished. It's a great way for me to enjoy my time on the vacation and my family can still enjoy their time on the beach as well. I'm just not one for tanning, so I'm going to get into what you need fishing wise, like the rod, the reel, the other equipment you may need, your fishing license, and just some all around good ideas to use while you're fishing on the beach. First things first, I want to talk about the reel. Now, I purchased this Pin Fierce about four or five years ago, and they have since, this is the second gen, I think they have a third gen Pin Fierce 3 now, and this is a 3000 size. I did that specifically so that I could use it uh, for my son to catfish with when we weren't surf fishing. So, if you just specifically want one for surf fishing, I recommend you go larger than the 3000 series, a four or 5,000, depending on how far it is to, at Panama City Beach, it's a pretty good ways to where the deeper water is. It has a double sandbar, so it's pretty shallow, it drops off, and then you have another sandbar. If you can get to that first drop off there, you're gonna catch fish. But by the time you do it with a 3000 series, it's gonna be pretty much spooled. There's not gonna be much line on there. So if you did catch something larger and it took off, you're gonna be spooled very easily. So I'm gonna recommend that you use a 4000 size as a minimum. Now the next thing is the rod. I got an eight foot Okuma. It is the uh, longitude. It's a medium action. It's, uh, it's two-piece, so it makes it easy to get it in your vehicle. That is one reason I went with an eight-footer. Now, if you have more room, a, a larger vehicle, and um, you would like to use a longer one because the longer the rod is, the easier it's gonna be to sling your entire weight rig setup out there farther. So at Panama, we were taking these eight-footers and we we're walking probably 50, 75 feet out into the water and then casting to make sure that we made it to at least that second sandbar in that area. Now, if you had a 10 or 12 footer, it may go farther. I'm not sure on the exact distance, but I'm sure the 10, 12 footer would give you more leverage to sling those weights farther. Now, I've used this rod for the past two times I went. That's not a whole lot of use, and there was bad reviews on it on Amazon, but I got it on sale. It's like 40 bucks. I'm not sure the price now. I'll link that down in the description, but it, uh, it's been a, a really good rod. It is a little bit too stiff, even though it's a medium action, it's a little bit too stiff for smaller fish, like 12 inches, it, it's just a little bit too stiff for them, even with a three ounce weight on there. So keep that in mind and uh, just get something that uh, will fit your budget that will still do the job. Walmart, there's a lot of fishing stores down there that have this equipment already set up, ready to go. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the line. I used a 30 pound Power Pro. Now you could go and get some uh, big game braid if that's what you want to do. You're gonna need a lot of it, especially if you go to a bigger 4,000, 4, 5,000, 6,000 size reel. Those spools get really big, they're gonna a lot of line. So the braid is really good for abrasion and everything else, but I do use a leader. So you have some shock absorption there from just initial shock of casting it and uh, setting the hook and things like that. Also, uh, depending on what you're fishing for, I usually use these Pompano rigs. They have two hooks on them. This one does not have the float on it, but I, I like to get some that have a float so it floats the, the, the lure up off the bottom. I usually buy these fish bites in the Sam Flea uh, flavor and uh, they come in pre-cut pieces or these longer, those are uh, 12 inch pieces or two of them in a bag. These are around $8. I did buy some of those recently. They, uh, you can also get you a sand flea rake and catch live sand fleas. 
um, you know, just kind of scoop at the water's edge. There is a way to watch for those. I was not any good, good at it. I tried it on the beach. I don't know if it was because there were so many crushed shells this last time we went, or I'm just not good at spotting sand fleas as, as the surf, as the water comes up. So the best thing I can recommend is get you a sand flea rake, like $40, $50, and scoop into the edge, like where the water is, scoop into the edge of the sand there, and uh, you should scoop some up. Those would be great live bait. Or you could get uh, frozen shrimp, it uh, especially at the park if you go to st andrews park that's usually where i fish at because there's less people the pier is included in the eight dollar parking fee so you have this pretty much area that has a lot less traffic on it a lot less people that you can use it's not as long as some of the other piers at panama but it is uh, a pier and it does go out to the uh, second sandbar so i usually fish there we fished off the pier and off the beach and uh, the last time we were there, we caught some spade fish because there was tons of them schooled up around the, the, the pier itself. So, but back to the, the bait, I have fished with frozen shrimp the first year and I caught sharks. Sometimes I'd double up and catch two sharks. They were in the 12 to 15 inch range and, range, and they, were, they were in pretty close. They were between the, the second sandbar and the beat and the actual water's edge. So, don't ever think that there's not sharks swimming around if you're out in the water swimming. That same year, I was standing out 20 feet into the water and turned around and looked in a wave and there's a, a four foot shark that had swam behind me and the water's edge. So I, I don't really like to get out there, but it does come with the, the territory if you want to get that distance when casting. The, the frozen strip did seem to work pretty good. The, the sand flea bites works good if you don't want to handle live bait. And the sand fleas would probably be, or some of the smaller crabs that you catch on the beach, uh, would be some of your, your better live baits to use. Now, if you're not specifically wanting to just sling a giant rod and, uh, and a heavy lure out there, then there is other options for you. I did not try um, to fish with other lures and things while at the beach because most everything revolved around uh, pompano rig and I'd really love to catch some pompano but that didn't happen I caught some bluefish and white and croaker things like that uh, as long and this past time just mostly bluefish that were around the 12 to 15 inch range but to get into uh, sinkers and stuff you want to get you can use these pyramid sinkers depending on how um, how crazy the surf is how big the waves are you may need a three ounce, they have two ounce. There's other options beside the pyramid sinkers. You have these Sputnik sinkers as well that will dig into the bottom. You can actually unhinge these like this. And I think technically, as you pull them, they're supposed to work their way back up in there. This one does not work that well. I've seen some that will actually work better than this one. They uh, this one was just snapped like this when I got it and I didn't use it I used the pyramid ones because they's already rigged up but this they only had a two ounce in this as well but I think it would dig in and work pretty good to hold your your lure in place because uh, one of the key things is you want that line really taut and you want to get it as high as you can and up so the waves aren't constantly pulling on the tip of your rod now one thing that I haven't mentioned is you need some kind of sand spike it will, uh, you can get PVC ones at Walmart. They used to be all PVC, just a tube. Now, uh, I noticed when I was in there, they have the PVC with an aluminum spike on it. So just get some kind of rod holder. That way you can get that stuck in there, get your rod up, get your line taut, and then that will also allow the people that's walking the beach at the water's edge, they can walk under. You won't have to worry about that. We want to discuss how you get your license in Florida. There, there's a couple ways you can get it. One is you can go to Walmart, go to the, the uh, sporting goods section and have them do you an actual paper copy of a fishing license. You can get a three day, I think there's a seven day and then there's your um, regular one year fishing license. I normally get the three day. It is not that much. I think it ended up costing me around $9 and everything. But the other option for getting it is on their app. It is Fish Hunt Florida, 
and you can use that to actually set up an account and purchase your license and it also contains all of their their guidelines so if you want to do saltwater fishing they have the guidelines for it and uh, fresh water everything is there hunting everything that pretend pertains to their uh, outdoors fishing hunting whatever is included in that, in that app there is also a uh, a short identification area, especially the regulated species, where you can go through and view those as well. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it helpful. Hopefully it it will help you get out there and enjoy your vacations even more. I know a lot of you dads get out there and you're just going through the motions. Some of you might actually enjoy swimming. Me personally, after going a couple times and getting absolutely blistered, even when I did put on sunblock, it just wasn't for me. So this way I can wear my fishing clothing. I can actually do some fishing. The family is happy and I'm happy and everything is well. So as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Fishing It Up.